Okay, here we go. This is part two. Chiller Wars. Got the uh, chiller in there. And we'll be whirlpooling around to the immersion chiller. Heating up the water still. It's recirculating. And we're at about 110 degrees. I'll be back. Okay. We are now a rolling boil. You can see. So I am going to knock out my flame and I'm going to go turn the chiller on. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. We are whirlpooling around the immersion chiller and Same water as we used yesterday, down to about 180 degrees after about 45 seconds. We'll check it again in a couple minutes. Okay, we are now at the 140 degree Fahrenheit mark at two and a half minutes. So, so far, not too bad. Pretty comparable with the plate chiller. Uh, got down to that critical level in pretty rapid order. And see the needle moving. I don't know if it's quite as fast as the plate chiller, but it is dropping. Going through 120 degrees right at 4 minutes. And for those of you that haven't seen my whirlpool setup, I've got this hose coming out the output over the pump. And back through a whirlpool arm which has a hose barb on the end of it and it uh, is angled about 15 degrees to the uh, side of the kettle. It's a pretty nice whirlpool. Okay, we are coming up on the 100 degree mark and we are currently at 6 minutes. So, I think that's a tad slower than the last run. Okay, we are just now passing the 80 degree mark, and here's where we're starting to see a pretty big difference between the plate chiller and the immersion chiller. We're at 9 minutes and 45 seconds at 80 degrees. Uh, if you'll recall, we were at 68 degrees, somewhere in the 8.5 minute range. Okay, we are now down to uh, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And the timing was 15 minutes and 25 seconds. So we can see, at least my equipment, the uh, plate chiller was uh, quite a bit faster, especially down at the lower temperatures.